Moolah La is brought to you by the nonprofit credit counseling agency, Credit Canada. Coming up with an estate plan is a whole process. There's a bunch of things to do. We have talked on this program time and again about how important it is. Uh, but one part of it that can be hard for people is choosing an executor. There are a bunch of duties that will fall to that executor. And sometimes people don't have a ready, willing, and able person in their circle that they can choose. And they may opt for something called a corporate executor. So today we're going to talk about how this option works, what it costs, all those sorts of things. Our guest is Leanne Kaufman. She is the president and CEO of RBC Royal Trust. Hello there. Hi, Bruce. How are you? Uh, what is a corporate executor? A corporate executor is an executor like you would consider any other executor to be, except in this case, you've named a corporation. Uh, typically, it's a trust company because trust companies are, by regulation, the only kind of corporation that can hold themselves out to be an executor, but all the same duties, all the same powers and responsibilities, um, just through a, a corporation as represented by its employees, instead of an individual family member, friend, lawyer, accountant, what have you. And if it is a corporate executor, I'm not naming an individual. I'm not naming a specific name in my will. I'm naming a firm, and then you would assign an individual to my to my estate? That's exactly right. You're, you're, naming the, you're naming the firm, and when the time comes to act, the firm will assign the team to you that will administer your estate, um, just as any other professional service would, uh, would, would step in for you in, in other forms of, of service in your life. Tell me a bit more about why people would decide to do this. So traditionally, I think people have really thought about it mostly in the context of I don't have someone appropriate to act, whether that's there's literally no family or friends um, that that makes sense in the inner circle or the appropriateness might not make sense, meaning uh, no one that lives nearby, no one that, um, you know, has the, the prerequisite sort of skills and capabilities to be an executor. But I think increasingly we should be asking ourselves why this isn't an area where we turn to professionals for advice mm -hmm. and service just like any other area of our lives. Yeah, it's a great question. I, I mean, I think about, uh, I've never acted as an executor, but I know people who have, and it is a tremendous amount of work, aside from the emotional burden that it can be. It's just a tremendous amount of work. For, for someone who does um, take on this role, for an, uh, settling an average estate, how long does that take in years and how much time would it take, um, you know, over the course of those years? Is it 40 hours over, a, over three years or is it 300 hours over, could be five years? It, it, it's probably closer to the latter, but it, of course it's going to depend on the nature of the assets, the nature yeah. of the, the, the relationship with the beneficiaries, et cetera, et cetera. But when we are, trying to figure out, you know, how, how we will staff, we assume that it's at a, probably a hundred hours of our staff's time. But remember our staff, we do this all day, every day. Yeah. We know what we're doing and we have the resources and the checklists and the templated letters and all that kind of thing. So assume, you know, a hundred hours is, I don't think an, uh, an unreasonable assumption, even for an average estate. And then the length of time you're for sure looking at two to three years it's not active for the entire time, but you want to make sure you get tax clearance, for example. Well, that takes months, if not longer. Probate takes months. You know, there's certain things that create periods of inactivity. And so you're, it's unreasonable to expect everything to be wrapped up in one year the way that people might have thought several years ago. You used to hear a reference to the executor year. That really isn't reasonable anymore. And if you think about, you know, we just had some work done at our house. It probably could have been done by a handy person who was willing and interested to watch the YouTube videos to get it done. I have no skills, no skills. I am the least skilled person. Light bulbs, I can change, and that is about it. So I think for individuals who don't have a predisposition or skills in this area, it, you know, they're looking to their circle and they don't see someone who rises to the top. I can see this being an opportunity to outsource at a very basic level. 
Yeah, and, that, and that's the question we we cheekily put to the public is why would you want to do it yourself? Why is this one area where you want to, where you do want to do it yourself? You know, we haven't mentioned the liability yet either. Mm. Massive liability can potentially come with the role of the executor. And if the executor is not also the sole beneficiary or one of the beneficiaries, then you're, you know, you're putting yourself in a in a difficult position. Um, where, you know, in any other aspect of your, of, of life, you, you probably would look to outsource. So it's mm. just, it, it's bizarre to me that it's this sort of last vestige where we, we hold on to the concept that we have to do it ourselves. Well, and I think the equation that people need to, to uh, sort through is cost versus benefit. I think the benefits are really, really clear. What are the costs? How much does it cost? Yeah. So, so any executor can charge fees and they vary from province to province, but generally speaking, you could carry the number of, you know, a maximum of 5% of the value of the estate in your head as what I would say is the outside maximum. Um, at our firm, we don't start at 5%. We start at 3.75% and we, we drop from there based on the size of the assets that we're talking about. So it becomes a sliding scale. I mean, typically, I can tell you that across all of the estates that we're currently administering, the average fee is around 2%, maybe a bit above, maybe a bit below. Now, again, that's average, some really big estates and some smaller estates. But again, you know, bear in mind, this isn't, this isn't just something corporations do. Individuals can and do charge, um, charge fees as well. Right. So you are thinking about it in the context of tens of thousands of dollars, depending on what the total estate is. And I assume that's invested assets and real estate and all those things. Yep. Any, anything yeah. that uh, if, even if there's, you know, shares of a private company or something like that included that those would, those would get captured in the value of the estate. There is uh, a level at which an executor does, does have some judgment and i'm using air quotes around some because the, the a great will has um, you know relatively limited uh, room for judgment because the wishes are clear but in the case of a trust for example um, i've seen wills where the executor could determine uh, an amount that could be allocated to a kid's education before they come into the a potential windfall of a trust at age 35 or something like that how does a corporate executor make those decisions in the absence of an integration into a family's culture and all the, I mean, I think there's a, a, a big pro to that and a con because they weren't at Thanksgiving in 1987 when that original fight occurred, which is why he can't have the money from the trust. <laughs> Well, that's a great question. And I should point out that it's also possible to have co-executors or co-trustees where it could be a corporate executor along with uh, family members ah, or friends. Okay. So, so that is an option. And if, if there's a concern about carrying the family culture, then that is one way to potentially address that. But having said that, um, you know, corporate executors know the law and, and the rules um, very, very well. Uh, you know, in the case of Royal Trust, we've been doing this for almost 125 years. So it's, um, you know, there's some fairly um, well-established procedures. We have a committee uh, that meets to do discretionary decisions above a certain level. So um, we, you know, we get our legal brains involved, our senior managers, and uh, and the voice of the client representative all around the table to have a fulsome discussion, consider all the all the things that need to be considered, and make our decisions accordingly. One of the the benefits, just to come back to those for a second, is. Um... In particular circumstances and with, with certain families, I'm sure that executor could be the target of a whole bunch of angst. How do mm -hmm. your professionals deal with that? Or is it as simple as, you know, a family lawyer in a divorce case, this is the job and you just have to roll with it. You're going to be in the midst of some some messy business. Yeah, there's there's no question that that sometimes our our clients are beneficiaries who are not happy that we're there. Um, so, you know, we just know that going in and we manage the relationship as professionally as we can. And, um, like you said, you know, it's, it's the job and lots of times there are very grateful people on the other end of the phone, sometimes not so delighted, but, you know, we, as long as we know that we've done the job to the best of our ability, that we've lived up to our fiduciary obligations, then, um, we stand by that. Do you... Uh, need to have been part of the creation of the will? 
or do you take, you know, could you be a corporate executor to any will as written? And I ask because there can be real variability in the quality of the will and one that you are completely signed off, like, oh my God, this is the best will I've ever read. You could be a corporate executor and it would be easy. Some wills are a mess from the get-go and you were named as the corporate executor and then you open up that Pandora's bo box and think, I should have been a tax accountant. <laughs> Yeah, so we do prefer to see the wills ahead of time, not only to address some of the things you're talking about around the quality of the drafting, but also just to make sure that we can administer in accordance with the intention of what they're trying to achieve, because sometimes it gets lost in translation and we've seen both sides of it. We know what the drafting says in the planning side, but we also know some of the practical pitfalls because we have administered so many accounts. So we may be able to circumvent some of that by um, you know, suggesting a tweak to the language and so on, as well as there's a few things we'd like to see in there that we have the power to do as a corporation that um, you know, wouldn't naturally be part of a will that um, you know, doesn't involve a corporate executor. So we, we ask for a few clauses to be included in that regard as well. If you were to have a private chat with a close friend who uh, their family member did not choose a corporate executor, they chose them and they were about to embark on this path that is anywhere from one to five plus years, what would your quiet, clear advice to them be uh, based on your years of experience um, in this world? Well, tongue in cheek, my first, my first reaction would be <laughs> renounce, get out of it, don't do yes. it. What were you thinking? Stop. <laughs> um, but, you know, I there's still an opportunity for assistance and professional help, even when a corporate executor hasn't been named in the will. So anyone who's named as executor can also seek our assistance and expertise through what we call agent for executor or executor assistance type role. So you can still get professional oh, help okay. even without having to have the corporation named. So, you know, we just, we, we offer that on a more of an a la carte sort of service, but we can do as much or as little of the administration to help a named executor as we would do if we were named directly. The one thing we cannot do is make the decisions on behalf of the executor I though. See. Does that service offering include a therapist? <laughs> well, well, sometimes I think our trust officers. Um, <laughs> That's how they function. Masters in social work as well. I'm sure. Really interesting uh, discussion, Leanne. Thank you for joining us. Oh, thanks for having me. It was fun. Leanne Kaufman is the president and CEO of RBC Royal Trust, and she joined us to talk about corporate executors. This is a, a professional service that very, very few Canadians even know about. Uh, now that you know. You can make an informed choice as to whether it's something that you want to add to your estate plan.